Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. In the last video preceding this one, we uh, fitted some new pistons, uh, seals and rubber boots to these calipers. In this video here, we've gone a bit further and we're going to be putting the pins into the uh, caliper carriers. As you can see here, we still have one that is not ready. It's actually in the electrolysis tank here and uh, I've given it a good dunk and it's going to stay in there for a couple of days. The uh, electrolysis is going to get the rest of the crap off which uh, I'm not going to be bothered to, to scrape off. This is the easy way of doing uh, rust removal. You can see it's happily bubbling away there and I've got this on 24 volts and uh, uh, a few amps but it's certainly pushing some current through there and it's okay, it's, it's working so we'll leave it a couple of days and come back to it. You can see here 24 volt and I'm pushing some amperage through this but it's only about 3 to 4 amps. Anyway, um, these caliper carriers, this video here is not just for when you're overhauling calipers, it's for when you're changing your pads too because you really need to make sure that you have good working pins to make sure your brakes are working properly. Now you can see what sort of condition that they can come out in. Um, not the healthiest of conditions and they want to be freely sliding in the caliper carriers and uh, I always recommend um, fitting new pins where you can um, pin kits are not that expensive and I have found actually that um, on the rears that I've supplied it's red rubber grease when really you should be lubricating the pins with something like this okay it's up to deb debate and I would never recommend using copper slip because it's bad stuff you don't use it on slider pins anyway the kits that I've got the front one here um, I actually got it off eBay from Brake Tech um, BCF 1375 which is for the uh, Discovery 2 front calipers okay and you get a comprehensive kit with it uh, I'll just show you the price here that was £17.95 okay uh, now the rears as well which I've got and I'd, uh, if you're going to do them I'll give you the part number in a sec but this was a little bit more expensive £19.75 part number here is uh, S S700 8 AH2 okay again this was bought from eBay no specific uh, vendor there right so that lot um, about 40 quid you can say to, to do these pins basically when you um, do uh, a brake reline you should always get these pins you've got to take the pins out anyway um, it's always wise to have these lubricated it's got fresh lubricant in them um, the rubbers here, well, yeah, they do perish and you should check them. You want to stop uh, any type of ingress or water or grit into the uh, the slider pins because um, they eventually seize and this can cause all sorts of problems like uh, badly worn brakes or pads worn on one side or even um, brakes not working hardly at all and that's quite common with this type of caliper. So anyway, this sort of lube here is uh, the best. I found it's the best anyway, and I'll explain in a little while about this. So this is the old pins, and I'll tell you what, they were see solid in these carriers, and it did take some electrolysis to, uh, to clean or to, uh, to start to shift them, and then I had to use heat as well. Right, so the pins measure out at 9.95 mm. Um, millimeters and I have a 10 mil drill here this drill set I actually use just for gauging so I can see uh, 10 mil if that fits in and moves fairly smooth that's okay now that's okay um, if you have something like a Freelander there'll be um, rubber um, bushes in there however this is a steel to steel which uh, causes more problems with corrosion it's very tight in that end okay this one's actually um, quite loose and I'm just showing you the amount of play in there, it's okay, it's better loose than it is tight. Okay, there's a technique for cleaning out these um, slider pin holes, or balls as we'll call them. And uh, there's uh, two types of tools you can make up. Now, I'll just show you the rust that's just come out of there from cleaning it up with emery cloth, okay. I've got this ball now to be clean enough to slide a pin easily through it. So the tool I've made up here is a split pin, okay, 
and some emery cloth. Emery cloth basically you can buy off eBay. Best to get it in uh, long strips, but you can also um, cut them up from um, squares. Uh, three types here, smooth, medium and coarse. Coarse is very hard to fold. Uh, medium is the best for this sort of job. Easily ripped off and basically a split pin. You fold it like this and then wrap it around the split pin. Just enough so it will fit in the ball. Now I've uh, here's just a little tip here. There's two mole grips which make a pin vise. I've had a 6mm bolt cut the head off it. And basically I've cut a slot in it which makes a more robust tool. You can see that. Well I've got an M6 bolt and uh, an M8 bolt. Same thing again. Basically I ran a ground grinder through that to get a groove. Okay, so you're putting some emery cloth on the end there and that becomes an abrasive tool. Split pin, it works well temporarily, should I say. The thinner the, uh, the tool you have, the more emery cloth you have to wrap round. You want it fairly snug in the hole and the emery cloth doesn't last long. If you know Defender brakes, you'll probably have seen this kit here, which is a brake uh, retainer, springs, okay, and the uh, split pins, that's where it comes from. So here you have a uh, long bolt, this is about 100mm long, and this one's about 150 I think it was. Um, cutting there, hacksaw or uh, whatever, and uh, this is what happens to the split pin after a while. It vibrates like hell. And then just get bent up, but it's good as a temporary tool. Okay, just to get yourself out of trouble if you don't have anything to cut some bolts with. Okay, so they're good for the toolbox. Yeah, so basically what you're doing is just uh, getting the emery cloth that's as, uh, almost as big as a hole and then just using a drill of some sort, either battery or air powered, and then cleaning out the uh, bores. Okay, so uh, there's not much dust in there, but all of these together, it took about, what, a minute to clean all of them it's a very quick process you see how it works there thing is like I said with the emery cloth it doesn't last long so you have to keep changing it I'll just show you that here there you go um, depending on what's in the bore is depending on how long the emery cloth lasts for but it's very very effective now we get these in uh, rolls and uh, I've got quite a lot of this because this is uh, very handy stuff for uh, buffing up metal. It doesn't, again, it doesn't take metal off, it just takes the crap off of the metal surface like rust. And with this coarse stuff you can actually remove um, greasy um, rust as well. So basically if you noticed, um, you can push it in like that, okay. If you have yourself a little bit of a pad on the end that will clean the bottom of the bore out as well. Okay, so it's as quick as that. All right, and that will be clean in there now. Right, so air blowers. I've got myself a little uh, pencil um, air gun, if you like. Uh, that directs uh, air at, um, very precisely, actually. It's pretty good. That cost about five pounds. This is the one you really need to have to uh, get right into holes. Um, these you can find for about, I don't know, nine pounds. This is adjustable, um, well, it's adjustable up to the point until it breaks, okay, and it is uh, it's flexible enough to uh, bend not quite round the corner. Now this one's brilliant, you can take the end off here, put a rubber fitting on it, or you can put a uh, brake pipe fitting and a long hose or a long piece of brake pipe on it, and that look, works quite good. Now, always, always wear goggles, and I'll show you why, you see that puff of rust there? Yeah, that's why. So you can see that there's quite a bit of crap that's uh, been cleaned up in these boreholes. Yep, there you go again. You imagine that going in your face and uh, getting in your eyes. Not good. Okay, so there we go. All of them are clean. Now the pins, I'm just checking them again for what sort of movement they have in them. It's fairly good, no problem. That's going to work for a while. Okay, new pins you can always gauge better than you can with the older pins, but basically it's up to you whether you put new pins or not. I always prefer to because they have a coating on them. Okay, right, so I'm going to show you something, and this is uh, Norbrem's kit, and it's quite a bit larger. These are commercial brake um, manufacturers, 
Okay, now they have rubber bushes, rubber fittings, brass bushes, and uh, slider pins. The, the kit is quite comprehensive. Now, this is just a slider pin kit, and you can see how much thicker the slider pins are compared to the Land Rover ones. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, however, I'm uh, going to show you something here. This is the lubricant that's recommended for basically all slider pins, and it looks like monkey jizz, okay? Um, you could go into an argument about this. I've found this one is actually pretty good. Ceramic lubricant is fine. It doesn't gum up and um, it leaves a powder on the surface which means that things are not going to get seized. This one had rubber grease in it. Um, not sure whether I'd use that. I would on a Freelander, uh, but not this. Okay, and on the front ones here, again, you have the monkey jizz, okay, in a packet. All right, so I'm going to stick with this stuff because I know it and I know it's effective. It's the same stuff that comes in Mercedes brakes as well when you're overhauling calipers or, or doing a pad pin changes okay so um i've got four pins i've got the whole lot to do the job with okay with some new rubbers as well rear pins are shorter than the front pins uh, i know some people might think oh i can use the front on the rears and the rears on the front you can't even though they are the same dimension okay or diameter now basically what i do is use the pin to uh, put some of the jizz on it or the, the lubricant shall i say and make sure the pin's lubed and then just run it down the bore first okay or the slider pin bore and then what i'll do after then is put the rubber on okay and there is a way of doing this i'll have to think about this first but yeah basically it's this ending onto the caliper carrier and then the larger thicker part goes onto the brake slider pin okay now you basically once you've got the rubber on you just push the pin down okay always remove it and i'd recommend just putting a little bit more lubricant in so there's some in the rubber as well okay so there's plenty enough to to do um a, a pair of slider pins and i actually had enough left over to do one of the rear calipers as well right so okay so you, you get the idea that should move freely and uh, not have any hindrance now the rubbers yeah they can be a bit of a pain to fit actually and uh if they won't stretch over, you've got to get them to stretch over some way or another. And the best way I've found is to use one of the pins uh, behind the rubber and just push it on. Make sure that the rubber is sitting home all the way round. I know it's just a trivial thing, but if it's not and it's like this, it'll come off and you'll find that you'll get corrosion into the pins very, very quickly. And that will affect your brakes. Excuse me, my voice is actually going right now, so I'll just quickly finish this video. Um, right, so there you have it, basically. Um, what I found, I missed out on one of these. I don't know how I missed it, but the pin wouldn't slide in there properly. So I uh, used the tool again, and I gave it some grief. I made sure that the uh, emery cloth was quite packed out first, and then I tried it again and the pin's okay it was actually sticky down the bottom end so maybe i just didn't ram the uh, um, tool far enough down but this is okay i just think that if your slider pin isn't um smooth when you first put it on then it will quickly start to fail okay that's the crap i have just taken out of the bore all right it did have a little bit of lubricant in there and that would have taken that out anyway once it's cleaned it's all put together so, like I'm saying, it's not a, not a hard job to do, and I've given you some tips here. All right. One of these, again, I will emphasize that the rubbers need to be home and make sure they are. Okay, because that will give you uh, longevity on uh, your brake efficiency.